I'm Abby Esparza with Photomanipulation.com and today we'll be looking at how to create a digital face paint effect in Photoshop. If you like what you see, go ahead and show some a like. And if you're new here, maybe even subscribe. We put out five new videos every week, all focused on advanced level photo manipulation. With all that, let's jump into what we have here. Today's tip is super quick, really simple, and really more versatile than it looks, uh, which is my personal favorite kind of tip. We'll be covering just this um, particular smeared painted effect because it does a good job of showing the extreme. As always, my color grade and subject are already prepped and ready to go. This color grade is nothing short of ridiculous, so if you notice any sluggishness, it's almost like Photoshop doesn't like when you create 20 different conflicting adjustment layers, who to thunk? So the stars of this effect are just two adjustment layers, a black and white gradient map layer, and a brightness contrast layer. For now, let's just pump up both the brightness and contrast of this layer. We will be coming back to both of these layer settings in a moment. But first, we want to group the two adjustment layers and invert the layer mask of the group from white to black using Control or Command I. Now with any kind of textured brush, a mask in an area you want there to be body paint. This doesn't have to be perfect, we just want a good chunk of skin covered so we can refine our adjustment layers. There's no magic number settings for this. Each image and skin tone will require different settings. Adjust both the brightness contrast layers and the opacity of the gradient map. And don't forget about Blend If. Blend If works like a dream for this effect. And while I very surprisingly didn't need it here, I'd say more often than not, you will want to use it. Because it really helps blend the brightness contrast layer into those shadows. The main thing is you want for the skin to look flat white, but not bright or glowing. So you want to make sure your paint is being affected by shadows. They are not a light source. Once your settings are a bit more refined, you can always adjust as you go, uh, you can start properly masking in your body paint. As I mentioned earlier, any kind of paintbrush textured brush will work wonderfully. There are a few default brushes that would work nicely, as well as brush packs of things like handprints, which um, I'll be using here today. Imagine actual body paint or oil paint and how it looks, feels, and dries, somewhat flaky and raised. Looking up references is always a great thing, they aren't just for digital painters. You'll also want to use the same brushes you use to mask things in um, to mask out previously masked in areas. This will give you a more natural edge. Create both heavy and light streaks of paint. This is a bit easier when you're using a drawing tablet, um, naturally, uh, which I do. But if you use a mouse, just make sure to adjust both the brush opacity and flow as needed. The bulk of your concentration is going to be creating organic uh, paint marks. There's no real trick here other than to be picky and again use references if you have a particular idea in mind especially, like war paint. I like to create multiple of these body paint groups, um, each group focusing on a different area. Here I have two more groups um, added to my original. One uses the same settings as the first group as we are mostly painting on the same type of surface, the skin. While the second has significantly different settings, as it's on an entirely different surface, the metallic mask. So I made this mark here using a single handprint brush, bringing attention to the importance of having texture already existing in the brushes you are using. With surfaces like metal or anything high contrast or overly dark, you'll want to give the paint a bit of help showing up. Create a new layer inside of your adjustment group and paint white wherever the paint needs to be thicker and more opaque. You can also lower the whole group's opacity if the paint seems overly opaque for what you need it to be or gives off too much brightness. 
be careful with layering adjustment groups as you can again slide into that glowing territory, but it can also give a really nice realistic effect, creating spots where the paint appears to be thicker and built up or layered. And when I say texture, I almost more so mean depth, the physical peaks that thick paint, especially oil paint, um, tend to create. To really put some true texture onto the surface of your paint, not just on the edges, you can use layers set to both soft light and normal, and use either a simple round brush or something with a bit more texture, like my pen brush here. No matter the brush you use, you'll want to set it to a low flow rate so you can build up these uh, shadows slowly, making very nice smooth uh, transitions. Your color will depend on the image. I can get away with a black and white here. However, if your image isn't as gray toned as this, you'll want to try different colors. Blues and browns tend to work best. Look at your image's undertones and go with that. And we are just painting lines for the most part. Uh, paint your light color where you want a peak and your dark colors wherever you want a shadow. Make sure your lines make sense. Uh, think of brush strokes, actual physical uh, brush strokes. Paintbrush bristles are creating these lines so they won't be random. Um, they will be flowing and dragging all in the same direction. Same if you were to smear paint using your finger. Spend time on this, don't skip it, and keep it subtle. The more time you put in, the better it will turn out, as well as just putting in the time so you get the feel of things. Spend time on the masks, and then spend just as much time on painting in their details. Don't skip that step. I feel like people are going to skip it, don't do it. With that, like if you like, subscribe if you really like it, and let me know what you'd like to see next. I'm Abby Esparza with PhotoManipulation.com. See you next time.